Well, this is Mr. Jern, and I am here to talk to you about activity 1.3.1 in Principles of Engineering, and that is the Solar Hydrogen System Distance Learning Version. Okay, we are not in the classroom, <clears throat> and the question is, what are we going to do with this? Well, here's the thing. In class, we would actually be building a solar-powered car. Okay, a little mini one. It's just, you put distilled water in it, and it... it it uh, electrolysis. Um, we, we do electrolysis on the water. It breaks it up into oxygen and hydrogen, and it allows us to. Um, well, now we have hydrogen. We could use it in our hydrogen fuel cell. Obviously, we are not here, so we will not be doing that. We're not in class. So let me talk you through what we are going to do because it's still interesting. You just have to use your imagination a little bit. Um, so for this one, it talks about, this is the actual like uh, version of it if we were actually going to do it in class. So what I'd like you to do is read through the introduction, talks about uh, energy and it talks about how uh, re rechargeable batteries are um, just storing energy for later use. And, and it just gives a little bit of introduction in, in, an introduction into hydrogen power, hydrogen fuel cells. Okay, not just for cars and, and automobiles, but for anything really. So it goes into the equipment. I would definitely take a look at this because if we get into the back into the classroom at some point, we may actually end up using the uh, hydrogen fuel cell at some point. And um, this is just a little bit of an introduction to it. So it's not even like we're going to be building anything amazingly awesome. It really is just sort of a introduction to the hydrogen fuel cell and talking about how much uh, current and, and basically power it can produce. Okay, so we're going to compare the hydrogen fuel cell to a solar panel and also compare it to some AAA batteries. So this would be the equipment list here. Um, this is something you might want to refresh yourself on is the reversible fuel cell user guide. Again, it's not going to be super useful at this time while we're away, but it's there for you here. Uh, a little bit of a video about hydrogen fuel cells. And... Once again, it's not going to be super useful since we don't even haven't really used the VEX system yet. But this is uh, how you would actually build the cars. So it would just you're just it's almost like assembling a it's just assembling something that's already pre-made for you, so or pre-designed for you. So you'd just be assembling, and this is how you would do it. So here's the procedure. Once again, you're going to set it up all in your engineering notebook, mm -mm, uh, just like we have been in the past. You're going to write down some. A little bit of introduction again you don't want anything out of context so make sure that you summarize the introduction and the procedure a little bit uh, don't just write down answers make sure you got everything in there make sure everything is understandable to anybody who reads it at any time in the future or now so it goes into a little bit about all that stuff like this um, now we are going to be using a heliocentrist fuel cell it looks like a lot like what's in this picture right here it doesn't it doesn't look all that amazing i mean it's it's a simple tech it's it's a technology that's well it, it's about the size of maybe roughly almost a, a fist and a half maybe two two of your fists put together give or take a little bit but uh you can see in this picture we have uh the positive and negative uh plugs for a banana plug and this is where you'd be plugging in the attaching the wires and whatnot so um so step one read the cell user guide when we do use it there are definitely some precautions we need to take with it they're fairly delicate and so this is something you want to familiarize yourself with although it won't be all that useful here so pretty much you could just follow along with the directions is all you're going to be doing for here so make sure you can imagine what's going on the pictures are pretty useful so here is a um, solar panel Here's a uh, voltmeter, and in this case, if you read the directions, it just tells you you're gonna shine a bright light source onto a solar panel, okay? Always keeping at least eight inches of separation because you don't wanna melt anything. Those lights do get pretty warm. Um, now, what you're gonna end up be doing then is with the light shining on it, you're going to measure the voltage. Um, and you can see how we've got the multimeter hooked up to the solar panel, uh, the solar cell, and we're gonna be measuring it without anything plugged into it. We're just measuring what's called an open circuit. Okay, it's just, just a power supply. There's, there's, there's no flow, there's no current, there's no flow of electricity or electrons, okay? So when you, um, when you get to this point, you're going to need to, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a 
there's a, uh, here we go. There's a little link right here. This is gonna be some of your data, okay? The data that you'd be measuring, okay, if you were actually doing this or similar to it, what you get. So you'd have to click on that and uh, you would get, so here, here's here's some data, okay? It kind of gives it, gives a little bit of information, just energy source, it's distance learning. Uh, it, it just tells you procedures three through eight. The steps are labeled here on the side. Here's three, four, and so on. Okay, and you can see in step three, there's gonna be a 60 watt, a 40 watt light bulb at one inch, a 60 watt light bulb at one inch, and a 100 watt light bulb at one inch. Okay, the circuit, it's an open circuit voltage, and here's the voltage you would get for each of those uh, trials. Okay, going back to here, you would record it for each of those things. So you would have not just one, there's only one box here, but you're gonna have to record the three trials. Okay. So if you read the directions, you can see exactly what's going to be happening. Okay. So then you're going to go proceed to step four. And instead of measuring current you, or voltage, you're going to be measuring current. And just read through these. Try to picture the situation. Look at the, look at the photos to get an idea of what's going on here. Uh, what's going on here. Power then you're going to calculate in step five. You can see there's no... Uh, there's no numbers given for step five because that is a calculation based on the numbers, the data from step three and four. And so step five, it actually tells you how to how to calculate it. You just multiply together, okay? So you'd be doing that power is voltage times current, okay? P equals I times V, got into that earlier. Okay, however, voltage and current have to be occurring at the same time. What you just saw was an example of just theoretical numbers. There's nothing hooked up to the circuit. And so what we're going to end up doing then is attaching the solar panel to a little car, just like this. All right. Now, distance learning, you're going to actually make a prediction. Make sure you read all this, consider all the things from above and make a prediction. OK, you're going to write it down. You can actually write distance learning prediction just like this. And then under that, write your prediction. OK, what's going to happen based on the questions that you're going to read in this little box. OK, and then you're going to start measuring voltage again, just like before. Okay, and just like before, the numbers are going to be here on this other file, this other page, number seven, number eight, voltage, current. Okay, just like last time, except now, instead of just being just a solar panel, a solar cell, just doing nothing, it's actually hooked up to something. Okay, so now it's hooked up, hooked up to an actual motor, an electric motor. So you'll get your numbers, your data for step seven and step eight. Okay. You can do the same thing before. As before, you're gonna calculate the power while it's under load, since it's actually being used to do something. Okay, now then, for steps 10 through, oh, a few. <laughs> uh, yeah, for the next few steps, we'll just say, um, we're gonna be energizing the fuel cell. So we're gonna actually use the solar panel to charge up the solar panel or the, the fuel cell okay better your a better word would be energized okay we're going to be using the energy from the solar panel to separate out the oxygen and the hydrogen from the water which when it's recombined later that's going to give us the energy to do stuff it's going to it's going to give the uh, solar panel it's energy the, the fuel cell it's it's power so again make us make a prediction based on the above information all right and in this time uh, we're going to have the solar panel is just there to just sort of re-energize the fuel cell. Uh, this is all, again, here's here's data for number 12 and 13. This is the fuel cell. It's going to tell you the voltage and the current. Okay. And then for 14, again, we're going to figure out <coughs> the volt, the, the power, excuse me. Um, first step for, for 15 now uh, and for next couple questions, for next couple steps, instead of all that mess, all the fuel cells and all that, we're gonna be comparing it to a couple, two AAA batteries. Okay, a couple AAA batteries. So once again, you're gonna to have to make a prediction. Okay, so now instead of building it and trying it out, which you would probably make a prediction anyway, you're going to actually uh, just make a prediction now instead of using the, the, the fuel cells or the solar panels, AAA batteries, two of them. First, they're going to be, um, Let's see, somewhere it says here, they're gonna be wired in series at first. Here we go. They're gonna be wired in series. So that means one battery after the next, okay? One battery after the next, just in a line, 
okay sort of like you might put in a in a flashlight or something in series or even in a remote control and what do you expect to again make a prediction based on based on these questions in here then you're going to measure the voltage okay it's going to be hooked up to the to the electric motor you're going to measure the voltage and again on this other thing it's going to uh tell you the voltage in series for 16 is question 16 and 17 or steps 16 and 17. you're going to get the current and you're going to have to calculate the power once again this is again just the batteries in series okay then this is called a breadboard in case you didn't catch that I've, maybe we haven't talked about that but uh, this is a breadboard it's just used for wiring uh, or connecting wires together uh, i feel like we may have but again this is just a picture of a breadboard there's several pictures of the breadboard you can see a bunch of wires coming out of it that's because that's what it's used for is to make electrical connections so starting at question 19 uh, we're going to uh, connect those batteries in parallel they're going to be parallel with each other so instead of uh, the electricity going through both of them we're going to have the two batteries basically next to each other both pushing with their voltage with their electric with their current or i'm sorry with their electrical voltage and so you're going to make a prediction again distance learning prediction so in your engineering notebook write distance learning prediction and then make your predictions based on these questions uh, these questions here in this box then you're going to measure the the voltage while it's under load hooked up to the electrical motor again and the current okay and then in this other file you're going to see the last little bits of data uh, the uh, voltage and current under load when the batteries are wild, wired in parallel with each other and calculate the power and then answer these questions once again when you're answering conclusion questions make sure you do so in like uh, with give it context maybe write the entire the question and then answer it but basically make it so that these you're not just writing down the answers okay write down the answers in such a way that anybody reading your engineering notebook knows what question you're answering okay and do so completely do so neatly don't forget to x out um, an initial uh, any big white spaces don't forget to sign an initial and date the bottoms of your pages and any other things that need to be done in the engineering notebook so hopefully that was helpful and if not just let me know and i could i could uh, help you out a little bit more